Well, St. Helena's Church, uh, part of the American colonial period, uh, British, English uh, settlers here, formed uh, an Anglican congregation here in Beaufort. St. Helena was the mother of Constantine, who was the first Christian emperor of Rome. Uh, St. Helena Island, which lies south of here, is a huge island, and this church served as the mother church for several chapels of ease around uh, the island itself. Some of the more interesting things about our church is the fact that it resembles, a lot of people say, a church of New England. We have no stained glass. Its simplicity is probably its beauty. Uh, and what you see today is exactly how it was in 1842, except for two stairs that go up on either side. During uh, the Revolutionary War and during the Civil War, regular services were interrupted because of, of the fighting, because of this becoming a hospital, because of many other. But there's been a consistent congregation here those many years now, over 300. The Battle of Gray's Hill, or the Battle of Beaufort, was fought about 10 miles from this site of the church today. In our graveyard, we have uh, four people who fought in that battle. Two were British soldiers who died at the battle, and they brought them here and buried them because they, too, were Anglicans at the time. One is a Major General John Barnwell, who was a captain at the time of the Gray's Hill uh, uh, battle, and he also is now buried right outside the church door. And a Lieutenant Benjamin Wilkins, who was a can uh, cannoneer, uh, is also buried in the churchyard. They took everything out of it. They didn't destroy the building itself, but they took all the pews and everything out. And, and after the war was over, the only thing that was found that could be used again was one small marble baptismal font that, was, uh, that we use today. It's the only thing that they found. New pine pews had to be put back in, and we have um, those, we're using those pine pews today. I think one of the major uh, points, though, was a great revival that took place here uh, in Beaufort uh, back in 1831. And then the rector uh, was a man by the name of Walker, who spent 54 years here as rector of the parish and was able to uh, really be the spiritual leader of the community. He was a, a soft-spoken man, a man, a godly man. Uh, he knew the Holy Spirit, though, and recognized the need uh, for the congregation and for the city uh, for a, a spiritual boost, as it were. And there was, at that time, an evangelist uh, by the name of Baker. Actually, he was a Presbyterian. Daniel Baker, he was. And he was invited to come here to do a revival. It, it touched many members, young men especially, of the congregation who went on to become prominent leaders in the Anglican Church, in the Episcopal Church here uh, in America. I think it means that the heart of the gospel, the faith that we have uh, inherited from the Bible and from the great traditions of Catholic Christianity, especially that that came uh, through our British uh, uh, traditions and you know, going all the way back to the colonial time, the Anglican tradition, which of all of the provinces of Christianity, I believe, is, is, is at its heart one of the most embracing uh, it is a missionary faith that also has its roots deep in the customs and traditions and heritage is the right spirits of the people. And that spirit is here represented by this church. The parish church sitting here with its spire with a cross on top of it and the bells ringing the hours cause us to remember where that heritage has come from. The founding fathers of our country who were educated uh, by the classical uh, traditions of, 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 of classical Christianity and seeing the vision that that imparts, the light by which we see that we are brothers. And all the challenges that that brings, that we live as brothers, 
in terms of just the issues that uh, we all know too much of, of sin and death and discouragement and despair. And yet, in spite of all of that, Jesus is Lord. And in that, we march ahead. It is not just a historical building. It is a alive church, the most alive church I've ever been in in my life. We uh, will average on a normal week about a thousand people worshiping. And if you want to come for Christmas or Easter, you best get here early because you'll never get a seat in that church if you don't. All the places I've lived, and I've lived all over the country and, and other places out the world, this has been the most welcoming uh, community I've ever lived in. Uh, people from away and people that have their roots all the way back in the history here and the military and, and the various professions and all of them, the, the Marine Station. Uh, it's, a, it's a place that opens its arms to everyone. Uh, and it's here that some of the great history of the reconciliation of the races have, have begun. It's a, it's a work that needs, of course, to go on in this country. But Beaufort represents the hope we have as Americans, I think. And, uh, and it kept it in such a way so that it has its kind of colonial charm, but also its international challenge uh, to see the world in terms of the modern great movements, and, but also this church, the gospel right at the center of it. Uh, like my friend the bishop in Africa said, you brought us the light, and by the light we can see that we are brothers. And that's the hope that I see in this place. And I've come here lately as a Yankee from Ohio, you know, and I thought I'd come down here for a while and then go back home, but I'm a born again, low country boy. <laughs>